Hello once again, this is Jeremy, and in today's video I'm going to go through a couple of examples with you uh, for related rates. So the idea of this section is to take those tools we learned when we started working on um, the special type of differentiation last section and apply those to situations where we have a couple different variables floating around. That's why you need that implicit differentiation. You'll notice in these, there's a couple different situations that could come up. In some cases, you're going to have to figure out an equation to represent the relationship among the variables. And in other situations, you're going to be given an equation that represents the relationship among the variables. Looking at this first example, which came out of your textbook, I have the number right there. We're told that, okay, a rock's thrown into a still pond and it causes circular ripple. Okay, so you, hopefully you're picturing this. And the radius is increasing by two feet per second. Now, one of the big things about these problems is figuring out what information you have. And so I'm going to write that down first. I'm going to say, okay, it's telling me the radius of the circle, which I can call R, is increasing by two feet per second. That's a rate of change. And not only that, it's a rate of change involving time. So I can think of this, if R is the radius, it's telling me the rate of change with respect to time. So that's dr dt is positive because it's increasing positive two feet per second. And I'll just write it just two. Now it says, how fast is the circumference of the ripple changing? Okay, circumference I could call C. So it's saying, what is the rate of change? So DC, DT, question mark, when the radius is 10 feet. So when R is 10 feet. This is the breakdown of the information we're given. And that's one of the first things you got to do with these problems. Now, the variables filling around are C and R, and I need a way to relate these together. Um, circumference, the formula for any circle, the circumference, is C equals 2 pi R, where R is the radius and C is the circumference. And once you have this equation that relates them, you're going to take this information here and plug it in after you take the derivative with respect to time. See, everything's in terms of DDT, right? So what I'll do is I'll take ddt of both sides of this equation. So I do ddt of c equals ddt of 2 pi r. Okay, now when I take the derivative of c, I get 1. However, this is with respect to t. So I have to multiply because of the chain rule by c prime. But in this case, c prime represents the derivative with respect to t. And since that isn't the variable we've always used, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, it's 1, which I'm not going to write out because it's multiplication. And I'm going to say, and then it's times dc dt, which you can think of as a c prime. Okay, that equals the 2 pi is a constant, so it comes out. And then the derivative of r is 1, but again, this is with respect to t, so i got to multiply by dr dt. It's the same idea as multiplying by the y prime in the last section. So now you'll see I have a relationship relating all these together. And so I can start plugging stuff in. I want to find this. And so this equals 2 pi. And then dr dt is 2. So this is 4 pi. And on my calculator, I can calculate that. Um, if you have a graphing calculator, um, there's actually a pi right above or right below the clear button. So you can just calculate exactly 4 pi. And I get 12.57 approximately. So that would tell me that this is approximately 12.57. And now this is the rate of change of the circumference. And since everything's in terms of feet per second, so this would be feet per second. So as this uh, circle, this ripple, moves away from the rock and the pond, of course the radius is getting bigger and bigger because the ripple's getting bigger, but circumference around the circle is also getting bigger. And this is the rate of a change of that circumference at a particular moment in time. So notice what we did. We got the information out, several variables floating around, and we had to pay attention like, okay, this is with respect to time. And then we had to connect everything up. So sometimes you'll be given this equation and sometimes not. So you have to be familiar with some of the basic uh, relationships among variables, depending on stuff like area of a circle, area of a triangle, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at another problem. And again, you'll notice there's a pattern with these, like all of the problems we've been doing. Okay, again, this is out of the textbook, number 18. So it says, a weather balloon's rising vertically at the rate of 5 meters per second. Somebody's standing on the ground 300 meters away. Okay, now, as I'm reading this and I'm kind of scanning it, I'm noticing there's a lot more going on than the previous one. So I'm probably going to draw a picture 
and then figure out what information we have. So I'm going to do all that up here. I'll say, okay, we got a weather balloon. We need a weather balloon. So there's my weather balloon. And we got a guy standing away from where it was launched. So this weather balloon's in the air. And this guy's standing over here. And it says that it's standing three, he's standing 300 meters from where it was released. So it was released straight from him. And this is 300 meters. And so now it's some distance away, right? And he is some distance from it. So I'm already putting a triangle there. And this would be a right triangle. I'm thinking of all the things as I was scanning this problem. Hopefully you've scanned ahead to see what we're going to need. It says at what rate is the distance between the observer and the balloon? That would be this straight line right here changing when the balloon is 400 meters high. Okay, let's go back through and see what information we have. And I got to name these since we need this piece of information and this piece, I need to call these like an X and a Y. So I'll just call this X, I'll call it Y. It doesn't really matter what I call it. All right, so going back through, what do we have? A weather balloon is rising vertically at the rate of five meters per second. Okay, rising, that'd be what we called Y. So the rate of change with respect to time for Y, dy dt, is five. It's positive five because it's going up. Okay. The observer's standing 300 feet away. Okay, we got that. At what rate is the distance between the observer? That's x changing. So we want to know what is dx dt when y, because y is the height of the balloon, is 400. Okay, this is the problem set up. We need a relationship between all of these variables. When you have a right triangle like this, the most common relationship is the Pythagorean theorem. So remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, the legs of my triangle are 300 and y. So it'll be 300 squared plus y squared equals x squared. So it's always the legs, and then they equal the hypotenuse. Everything's with respect to time, so what I'm going to do is take uh, DDT of both sides. Notice I'm not messing with this because it's a constant, and when I go take the derivative of it, it'll be zero. Okay, time to take derivatives. Derivative of a constant is zero, that's gone. Derivative of y squared is 2y. But because y doesn't match up with t by the chain rule, i got to multiply by y prime, which in this case is dy dt. And then this equals derivative of x squared is 2x, but once again i got to multiply by x prime, which is dx dt. Okay, so now I can start plugging information in, but wait a second. We have dy dt, that's 5. We're trying to find dx dt. We have y is 400. We're missing x. Where can I get x from? Well, if I go back here, when y is 400, what is x? I need to know what x is then, because then I can plug it in down here. This is a piece of information we didn't need to worry about last time. When y is 400, I got the relationship 300 squared plus 400 squared equals x squared. So that means that x is the square root of 300 squared plus 400 squared. In other words, if you do this on your calculator, x is 500. Maybe you recognize this as a special triangle, actually. All right, now I have all the pieces that I need. So this is going to be 2. y is 400 at, this, at that moment. Remember, derivatives are all about the rate of change at a very instant. dy dt is 5. And this equals 2 times. x at this moment is 500 meters and then we're trying to find dx dt. So I need to solve for dx dt. So I'm going to do that right here. dx dt will equal 2 times 400 times 5, which you could have already calculated, divided by 2 times 500. And when I go through and calculate this, I get 4. Something very simple, right? So it ends up being 4. And remember that all this is talking about uh, meters. And in the first instance, it's meters per second. So this would be meters per second. So let's look back at what this actually means. This is telling me that at the very moment 
when the balloon is 400 meters high, at that very instant, this distance right here is increasing by four meters every second. And at that very instant, this distance right here is increasing at five meters per second. That's a snapshot in time. So that one was a little more difficult, right? Mainly because of this little piece. We were missing a variable that we needed. And in the previous one, we didn't even need the variable that we had. It all depends on how the question's set up. This is really a deep analysis. Well, in other situations, you're already given the relationship, and that can make it kind of easier. So let's take a look at one of those. Okay, so in this example, it's telling me that we have a company making calculators. We have a revenue function, okay, where X in this case is the production output for one week. So the number of calculators they make in one week. Now let's start reading a little bit more. If production is increasing, this is a rate of change, so I'm going to write this down. If production is increasing at the rate of 500 calculators per week. Okay, so production. X is supposed to be production level. So this is telling me if dx dt, because it's a rate of change with respect to time per week, is 500 when production output is 1,500. So that'd be x is 1,500. So when they're making 1,500 calculators a week, the rate of increase is 500 calculators per week, okay? Find the rate of change, increase or decrease, in the revenue. So we want to find dr dt. All right, but look at what we have. We have x is floating around and r is floating around, right? We have a relationship right here that already has those. So what I need to do is take this and take ddt of both sides. Now, when I take ddt of r, I'm going to end up with dr dt by the same argument as before. Okay, this derivative is going to be 200, but we got to multiply by dx dt. That's that chain rule, just like with implicit differentiation. This is going to be minus 2x over 30. And then times, once again, dx dt. Now, I can simplify this a little bit. Um, this is, I can bring out a dx dt, dx dt times 200, and then this would be x over 15. Okay, we're trying to find dr dt, and it equals this stuff. We have this is 500 times 200 minus x is 1500 over 15. So you go ahead and calculate this, and that's pretty straightforward, right? Because 1,500 over 15, this is just 100. So this is 200 minus 100, so that's just 100, times 500. So you should get 50,000. Okay, now think about what we're doing here. This is the rate of change in the revenue. So revenue is increasing by $50,000, and this would be per week since it's DDT. Much different, right? But what made it different was we were given the relationship. That made everything different here. So it's all about taking the relationship or figuring out what the relationship would be and then using that to relate all the rates. That's why it's called related rates. You're taking a relationship between the variables and bringing back a relationship among the rates of change.